whole society is in a quite big change due to increased population, increased wealth. The pressure on resources is increasing and the water sector can contribute to making the whole society more resource efficient. Of course, the most natural one is recovery of water. The other part where we can contribute is recovery of all the organic carbon which is in the wastewater. What are the options currently, but also what are the boundary conditions to really make a wastewater facility a resource recovery facility. If we take resource recovery serious, we have to go to cooperations for bringing the, the recovered material, because that's not a product yet, just recovered material from the treatment plant to us market and create market volume. So the main products are a few aspects which can directly recover, that's phosphate and that's uh, uh, fibers, cellulose fibers. Nitrogen is a bit more complicated because nitrogen is not a limiting resource, so you don't need to recover it. Only when you need less energy to recover it than converting nitrogen gas into ammonia, it makes sense to recover it, but there are no good options yet. And from the organic carbon, it's mainly polymers. So you can convert the organic material into biopolymers and reuse the biopolymers and the refractory organic carbon which is left over, which is not biodegradable in my view, should go back as a soil fertility enhancer into the agriculture in order to stimulate the food production. I think that the real application is in all kind of novel materials which are currently under development, where if you combine these polymers with, say, inorganic materials, um, give interesting material properties. And these, that's called uh, nanocomposites or composite type of materials. And they can be, for instance, it's a very simple one, in cement, there's normally only say a calcium based inorganic compound. Um, if you mix that in production with alginate, you get a more stronger material, which then saves, which makes that in the end you can use less cement. Or if you make uh, say that these polymers you can get from, from, from alginate, so the extracellular polymers, you can mix that with clay and you can get a new type of fiber which you can then use for making. Uh, clothes or other things. Or if you have the, the polymer which inside microorganisms, the so-called bioplastic, you can for instance mix that with wood and get an interesting new material which has a very high durability and, and, uh, and uh, it's effectively completely bio-based green type of material which you can use to make shells or other things. And in the past, before the, the chemical ammonium production, which is the Haber-Bosch process, there were people going from door to door to recover the urine and the feces in order to bring it to farmers who would pay money for it. There were people going up even into the 60s in the Netherlands, door to door, to collect the vegetable and garden waste and sell it to the pig breeding farmers. So these people earned their living out of this kind of activities. And uh, partly due to regulation, but also simply because the economy increases, uh, other things are available. But even nowadays, if you go to many cities in the world around, there are people on the streets collecting the tin cans, collecting the plastic bottles, and of course don't make a very good living from what they're doing, but contributing very much to recovering resources out of the urban society. And what our creativity should be, think about ways uh, enabling technologies which enable individual people to make a living out of resource recovery.